Hey besties, hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, today I thought I would do a quickie review of my little printer. Um, a couple of you guys saw it the other day in my Sign With Me video um, because I print out a little photo every week to use in the corner. Um, so yeah, I figured I would do a little review. The one that I have is the LG Popo, short for Pocket Printer, um, and the model number is 251. There's a couple of others that LG's done beforehand, but this is the newest one and it comes in pink, yellow, and I think there might be white and purple as well, but obviously I got the pink one because, well, obviously. <laughs> it feels pretty solid, like it's pretty well made, um, but it's not super heavy, so I could see myself easily carrying this around in my bag if I wanted to use it out somewhere. So to open it up, you just flip up the top and the photo paper goes in there. I've got a pen here as a size comparison just in case anyone's wondering. Here's a look at the inside. Once you open it, the little lid part clicks into position. So this is the photo paper. Usually you buy them in three 10 sheet sets, so 30 total, um, and they come with a little uh, foil pouch to keep any extras in, because you're not supposed to keep them in the machine for a long time. Uh, I assume that it ruins the photo paper or something, um, but I'm lazy so I keep it in there anyway. And just check out the foil pouches. <laughs> They all come with this little blue piece of paper which you put on the bottom and what that does is the first time you add the blue piece of paper in um, and try to print a photo, the printer scans it um, and uses the barcode to calibrate itself, which is pretty useful. So the little troubleshooting guide says that if you are having blurry prints, you should use the uh, barcode again so it can recalibrate itself. I don't know whether that actually works or not, but it's good to have the option. You can also apparently use the blue sheets with other brands of paper. So for example, if you want to buy the Polaroid brand of paper, apparently uh, you can use the LG blue sheet and just stick the Polaroid paper on top, but I haven't actually tested it out, so don't quote me on that. Now let's go and actually try to print a photo. So what you do is you turn the printer on using the button on the side, then you go to your settings and make sure Bluetooth is switched on and select the printer. If you've already paired the printer before, um, you shouldn't need to actually go and select it in the settings again. It should actually just remember the connection. But either way, once you've connected it, just open up the printer app and select the photo that you want to use. There's a couple of selection options down the bottom. Um, so you can do things like add frames. Uh, you can add a couple of filters, uh, change the positioning of the photo. Uh, you can make collages, that kind of stuff. The filters that it comes with are not super great, so my suggestion would be to edit in a different app um, and then just bring the finished photo over into this one. Pretty much all of the filters here will really blow out the photo. Um, and to be honest, none of these little printers are going to give you amazing quality to begin with. Uh, so the less that you do to the photo is probably a better idea. Otherwise, you'll end up with just something that looks completely blown out and terrible. Okay, so let's actually print the photo. Uh, you click the little print button and it says it's sending it off to the printer. Make sure you're connected, blah, 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 blah. And then once it sends it, you can start editing your next photo um, or you can just close the app and disconnect once it's sent. The first one's going to take a little bit longer because uh, it needs to use the blue sheet and then it will print the photo after that. So while we're waiting for it, I'll just fiddle around with some of the other photos. Here is a terrible one of James and I from Snapchat. Uh, let's have a look at what filters we have. Uh, and also you can see here that there are a few different options uh, in terms of uh, contrast, brightness and all that sort of thing. But you will find that again, even just the iPhoto app has better control and options for editing. So I don't suggest using this app to do any editing. And while I'm just setting this second one to print, the first one has started coming out. So if you don't count the time that you need to do the uh, blue zinc sheet, the print time on these is actually not too bad. But again, keep in mind, you're never going to get super great quality because this is these little printers are basically a gimmick. You're never going to get crazy photo quality like you would get from a print lab. And even you would get a lot better quality if you were just printing at home on your home printer most of the time. These days, home printers have photo settings, which are pretty good. Don't expect to be getting the same kind of quality that you get on that on your cute little printer because basically, as fun as these are, they are definitely about the experience rather than the quality. So now we'll just wait for the rest of them to print out. Oh, and that's the one other plus. Um, they do seem to update the firmware quite often for this. 
So maybe like once a month I'll open up the app and there'll be a new firmware update which makes me happy because I know at least they're still supporting it and so any technology advances will probably come through to this for a little while. And you can see that I ran out of battery, so I just plugged a little USB into my laptop and continued printing. That's one thing that I really like about this model is that you can use it while it's plugged into the wall or your USB. You don't need to wait for it to charge. You can just power it directly off your laptop if you run out of battery. I did a lot of research before I bought this one because there are quite a few other branded versions out there. Uh, I ended up choosing this one because the price per photo sheet was better in the long run than some of the other ones. Uh, it definitely depends on where you live though because uh, if you live in the US, Amazon certainly has a lot better deals than we're able to get here. Uh, so I think when I was looking, the Polaroid branded version one was cheaper in the long term if you lived in the US, but because um, shipping from US to Australia is much more expensive than shipping from Asia to Australia, the LG branded one was cheaper because I could get huge packs of the LG paper shipped from South Korea straight here for much cheaper than the US versions. So definitely do a little bit of research. The quality between all of them is pretty much the same because they're all just using the zinc paper and it's basically the same thing but branded differently. You're not going to find a huge difference in quality between brands so just get whichever one is cheaper where you are. I bought mine off eBay and from memory it was at around $100 Australian but uh, I ended up being able to get a deal on the paper from Amazon because I was shipping some other things from the US so when you didn't add on the shipping charges for parcel forwarding services um, I ended up getting another, what, like 90 or 100 sheets of paper quite cheaply. My reasoning for buying this was because I really wanted one of the Fuji Instax cameras, um, but the film is so expensive for them over here. I don't know what it's like overseas, but here, if you want to buy locally, you're paying about two bucks per sheet. And I can't, <laughs> I can't justify that in case I'm crap at taking photos. I mean, but realistically, half of the photos, I had borrowed a Fuji Instax for a while and I was playing around with it. It was really fun. Um, but half the photos I took just sucked. So I decided I'd rather have the quality of the camera on my phone and have the ability to chuck out the 20 selfies that suck and just keep the one good one, add some filters and edit them, whatever, draw cute things on them per Chris style, um, then have like the cute funness of the Instax. So this allows me to take it wherever I go. I can still print out photos um, if I'm with friends or anything. I can still print a thought one each, like having an Instax, but you kind of get a little bit more creative control. So here's a close-up of the photos that I printed today. Uh, they look a little bit worse on film than they do in real life. Here are the images that I printed them from, so you can get a bit of an idea of what they look like on the camera or phone versus what they look like in real life. But in real life, I'd say they look a little bit less blown out. It's just the settings that I'm using on my video camera. In conclusion, I would definitely recommend the LG Popo uh, 251. It's really cute. Um, it's definitely portable. I think the quality is as good as you're going to get from one of these little machines. Uh, I definitely think it's probably a step up on Instax photos, uh, as fun as the Instaxes are. I would recommend this over them because you get a lot more options. Also, it's really cute and it comes in pink. <laughs> Hope you guys have enjoyed this review and found it helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer. There's links to where you can buy it in the description and whatnot. That's about it for now, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!